Hey there, want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it everywhere and even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters. And here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer. So no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can distribute your podcast to Spotify and everywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are available on Spotify as well. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. Ever since I discovered Spotify for podcasters, I've been able to reach more listeners as well as start earning advertising revenue. I highly recommend you give it a try. Download the Spotify for podcasters app or go to spotify.com slash podcasters to get started. Hey guys, how are you? I hope you are having a fantastic day. My question for you today is this. Have you ever received negative feedback or even like a bad review and you just weren't entirely sure what to do with that information? Well, I got you. You are listening to the Career Talk Learn, Grow, Thrive podcast. We talk about everything career related around here and I really just tell you how it is. My name is Stephanie Dennis. I am your host. My background is in human resources, which is what I have my master's degree in. Today in episode number 60, we're going to be talking about what to do with that negative feedback. This is a good time to mention most of my episodes do contain adult language. Let's get into it here, guys. Okay, we are going to cover 16 points as it relates to how to process and overcome receiving negative feedback. And this is really important because as we all know, we're not all perfect, right? As much as we wish we could be, we're just not. So when we do get feedback, if it's not in our favor, we want to make sure that we're still getting everything we can out of that feedback. Even if it wasn't delivered in a positive way, we want to make sure we can receive it in a way where we can still improve. So let's get into these 16 points here. Number one is going to be remaining calm. And this is really important for those of us who, and myself is definitely included in this, who can get defensive or maybe upset if we get negative feedback. So we want to make sure that if someone provides us with feedback that we don't like or agree with, that we are remaining calm. Number two is to take the time to reflect and and evaluate before you react. And now if you're listening to this after you've received negative feedback, just keep this one in mind for the future. But it's really important because if you jump to defensive mode and get super upset and start reacting before you take a beat to just pause and think think about how you want to react and what you want to say and choose the words that you're about to use carefully, it could get you in a really bad or even worse situation. Number three is actually just a reminder. So the reminder being perception is reality. So how about those of us who if we're really focused and we're really busy we kind of just go heads down and we get to work you know we hit the grinder whatever the hell that phrase (laughs) is I forget but anyway and some people can perceive that as you and I say this because I've received this feedback myself is that comes across as bitchy and you don't really care about you know building relationships with your colleagues or what have you and when someone told me that and of course they didn't use those words but that's the reality of the situation right I was like oh my gosh not at all I was just super busy and there was like a week or two or whatever it was where I was just like literally at my desk not really chit chatty and just getting shit done right however 
now that people had that perception, that's what they thought of me. So when I say perception is reality, it may not be true for you. However, it's how people feel and we need to make sure that if we are doing something like that, we change our behavior if we don't want that to be people's reality for us, right? Number four is do not argue. And this one, even for myself, can sometimes be challenging because again, bouncing back to a couple of the other ones that we already talked about, sometimes if I'm getting negative feedback, my knee-jerk reaction is to get defensive. And if you're defensive, that might come across as you arguing. And we definitely don't want that to be the case. We want to be the people who can receive feedback, even if it's delivered really poorly, we want to be able to receive feedback well. Number five is to know this. Feedback is a really, really good thing, even if we disagree with the feedback that we're getting. There's definitely going to be times that we get feedback and we definitely don't agree with what's being said. And it's really important to know that the feedback is still valuable because again, going back to perception is reality, if that's how someone sees you or feels about you or what have you, right, then there might be some truth to that and that is our opportunity to take a minute. Okay, number six is looking at the data. So let's say you've received feedback around, let's say performance. So maybe you're in a sales position and you were told that you're the bottom of the team or the last on the team or what have you in terms of sales, goals, numbers, metrics, all that good stuff. So it's really hard to argue with numbers and data. So whether it's true or not, right, maybe someone just thinks you're at the bottom of the list, but maybe you have numbers to back up the fact that you're not, or you're doing really well and you're hitting and exceeding your goals, or maybe that data does show that that is indeed true. And then you need to, from there, if you know you're in the right role, don't let that deter you from being able to move forward and do well. So here's an example. If you are that sales rep, you're last on the team, all of your numbers are okay or maybe poor, they're not great, they're not fantastic, maybe you're 80 or 90% to your goal. And that unfortunately puts you at the bottom of the list, right? When you're compared to your other uh, teammates or colleagues or whatever. So if you know this is the role you're meant to be in, you're happy with your job, you love what you do, don't let that put you in a rut that's going to deter you from being able to crush it next week, tomorrow, next month, you know, all the other numbers that you're shooting for. Number seven is ask a lot of questions. So if you get negative feedback, again, these aren't defensive questions. These are genuine curiosity questions. Maybe you got the feedback that people perceive you as someone who isn't approachable. You are, you know, stuck in your own little world and people are offended by that. You can ask some follow-up questions. You know, it can even be something like, how do people prefer I communicate with them? How are other people communicating with the rest of the team in a way that makes them feel more comfortable? Things like that. So it's not defensive, but you're genuinely trying to understand where they're coming from so you can do better. And that leads really well into number eight, which is learn. So ask your questions, take the time to understand and and learn so then you can further you know improve from there number nine is going to be more of a self-reflection point so taking the time to honestly ask yourself what are the truths that are in the negative feedback that you received because more than likely there is some truth there. It's not very common for someone to give you negative feedback or a negative review built on 
all lies. Again, going back to perception is reality, it could be one of those situations and that's what makes it true. However, again, most often people aren't going to be giving feedback that's just 100% out of nowhere. They made it up. They had no base for building upon whatever feedback they got to. So ask yourself, what are the truths involved in this feedback? And number 10 is going to be asking for help if you need it. And now most of us, I mean, definitely not myself, I'm totally kidding, I'm totally guilty of this, have a little bit of a hard time asking for help. And it's not that I think I know more than anyone else. It's for me, it comes from a place of wanting to be the person that other people go to. And sometimes that gets in the way. Like I get in my own way when I need help it takes me a little bit longer to get to that realization so you can take my bad habits and learn from them (laughs) and I'm totally cool with that so if you're confused if you're stuck if you're not entirely sure what to do next don't be afraid to ask for help and it doesn't have to be a colleague who is familiar with the situation and oftentimes that might even get you into a bigger confusion or could get messy I guess is what I'm trying to say you can ask you know a friend that doesn't work with you maybe you have a mentor you can consult the google machine there's been plenty of times where I was like what the hell do I do here and I google it so So there's a lot of different places you can go for help. Maybe it's your family. I don't know who it is for you. Uh, You know who that person might be. But just don't be afraid to ask for help. Number 11 is asking yourself and not even really yourself, uh, but asking others what your blind spots are. So oftentimes we have what we call blind spots or areas of opportunity or weaknesses or things to improve upon depending on how you want to phrase it and we don't know what they are. So I would encourage you if you have negative feedback that makes no sense to you, it feels like it's out of the blue, you don't understand where it's coming from and you ask the person who gave you that feedback some follow-up questions and you're still like, what? the hell and you're just totally caught off guard I would encourage you to go to a couple friends a couple family members and ask them what your blind spots are and more than likely they're going to be able to tell you some stuff that you may not know or may not have thought about and that might help you connect the dots to that feedback number 12 is to create a plan to improve Now, you might want to create that on your own. You might want to work with your manager. You may want to work with the person who gave you that feedback if it wasn't your manager, maybe a friend or a family member. I don't know who you want to work on this plan with, if anyone, but you definitely, if you're getting negative feedback, you want to make sure that you're creating a plan to improve. So either improve the negative behaviors that are indeed happening or even improve the negative perception that's happening. Number 13, and this one is more so if you're working with a manager to create an improvement plan, and this is to set clear expectations and goals moving forward. So if you've gotten yourself to a point where you're on like a formal uh, performance improvement plan, so a PIP sometimes people call it, uh, there's many other terms for it, but you want to make sure that you have very clear expectations and very specific goals goals that you have set in place for you to achieve to make sure that this is no longer an issue because if they're fuzzy or unclear expectations it's going to be harder to prove on paper right that you've actually improved. Number 14, and this one again, more so if you're working with someone at work or a manager or a supervisor or something like that, is to set follow-up progress conversations. So the last thing we want to do is get bad feedback 
and then put together a plan, have all your goals set, expectations are clear. You know, we've had open lines of communication up until this point about whatever this feedback might be. And then we don't talk about it again for six months when all the goals are due. We don't want to do that. If we're getting negative feedback, we want to make sure that we take the control if it's not offered to us and say, hey, I would love to connect with you in another 30 days on this. I know the goals aren't due for another six months, but I want to make sure that we're checking in regularly. So if we're off track, we can course correct. Because what we don't want to happen is in six months, let's say you, for whatever reason, misunderstood where this person was coming from in terms of the goals if they weren't, let's say, numbers-based. And then you're like, wait, what? You know, because you don't want that to be the follow-up conversation where you're confused, you might feel misled, you might feel confused, and probably frustrated and then that's when we might get offensive and then it might just go south (laughs) so we don't want that we want regular check-ins Number 15 is more of a reminder and if you need to vent try and make sure it's not with work colleagues and I know this is really hard and I've definitely been guilty of this However, it is unprofessional, it could ruin someone else's day, and then they're going to go vent to someone else about something else, and it just kind of snowballs into everyone just being like, blah, for the day, which can roll into a week, which could then roll into kind of a negative team culture. And I know that sounds a little bit dramatic, but I've seen it where people are going through, and when I say people, I mean teams, are going through a hard time or something that's difficult and it just snowballs out of control until everybody just doesn't even want to get up to go to work anymore. And that's what we definitely don't want. Number 16, also another reminder, (laughs) and this one's really important and I don't know who is kind of the the driver of this phrase, but when we're getting feedback, we really have two options, right? We can get better or get bitter. And if you're just going to be bitter and sour about it, things aren't going to end well. But if you genuinely want to get better, that's where the growth is going to happen. So those are my 16 points that I have for you as it relates to feedback, receiving feedback, specifically that negative feedback. And if you want to either read or even listen to a good book on this, hopefully I say this name right, Sheila Heen, I believe, and Douglas Stone have a book called Thanks for the Feedback. And this I listened to... I say it was like a year, maybe two years ago now, but I saw her talk at one of the Global Leadership Summit conferences and I really, really was impressed. So check it out. I personally listen to it on Audible, but if you listen to audiobooks somewhere else, you know where to go. <laughs> so go there. <laughs> I really liked it. Anyway. All right, guys, that is it. I hope you found this information helpful, valuable, something that you can take away and learn from. As always, thank you so, so much for taking the time to show up, listen to the podcast. I know a lot of you have been sharing it and writing reviews, and I genuinely appreciate that. I love reading the reviews, so if you haven't had a second, please take the time. Uh, You guys are so sweet when you write them, so thank you. I, oh my gosh, I love reading them. Like, I can't tell you how much I love reading them, so thank you. Uh, You can find more information and then the show notes over at the website, so findingthebestfit.com. And then also, I don't know that I've mentioned it in a while, but we do have a Facebook group for the podcast. So if you have some questions or you just want some support on something, definitely click in the episode description or head over to the show notes for the link and you can post your questions there or just network with other people who, you know, want similar support. So it is a safe place. So nice people people only. (laughs) And there are rules in there, of course, about just posting nice and being respectful, but we'll just put that out there. 
All right, you guys are awesome. Thank you so much again, and I hope you have a kick-ass day. Bye-bye.